So in this lecture, I'd like to talk about ionic bonds. But before we understand what ionic bonds are, let's talk about electron affinity as well as ionization energy. So here we have parts of our periodic table. So we have hydrogen, lithium, sodium, we have beryllium and magnesium. And on this side we have three noble gases, fluorine, chlorine, and we have oxygen and sulfur. So let's look at what ionization energy of an atom is. Now, according to my definition, ionization energy is the energy required to remove an electron from an atom. So, to demonstrate that, we're going to use the following beryllium atom. So, beryllium has one, two, three, four, four protons. So, there are four protons within the nucleus, also four neutrons. And since our neutral atom has a charge of zero, that means if we have uh, four protons, we must have four electrons. So, two electrons are placed into the 1s orbital and two electrons are placed into the 2s orbital. So, what this basically means is that in order to remove an electron from the outermost shell of my beryllium atom, I must input energy, I must do work on my atom to take that electron away. So, if I input enough energy, I will be able to pluck this outermost electron away to form the following beryllium atom. Now the number of protons is the same. Before we have four protons and now we have four protons. So that means that we still have a beryllium atom. but since we took that electron away, that means that we're going to have a cation. We're going to have a net or an overall positive charge because now we have four protons, each have a plus one charge, but and three electrons, each have a negative one charge. So negative, uh, negative three plus four gives us a positive one charge. So this beryllium has a plus one charge, and this is now a cation. Now, my next question is, where did this energy go? Well, this energy actually went into my atom system, into this atom. So that means that this cation has more energy than this uh, neutral species, neutral beryllium atom. So that means because this has a lower energy, this is more stable than this cation. So once again, ionization energy is the energy required to take away an electron from a neutral, in this case, a neutral atom. So on my periodic table, the ionization energies are labeled with the green numerical value. So for example, for lithium, or actually let's take beryllium, beryllium requires 9.32 electron volts of energy to take away this electron. And this energy goes in to this atom forming this cation, this beryllium uh, positively charged species. So now let's talk about electron affinity. Electron affinity is the energy that is released when an atom is at, or when an electron is added into my neutral or whatever type of atom. So now let's work backwards. Let's start from this case. Suppose we have this same positively charged beryllium atom, and let's suppose I take an electron and I put the electron back into my outermost shell of this positively charged cation. What I get is the following beryllium atom. This is a neutral beryllium atom. Now notice what happened here. When we were going in this direction, I needed to input energy into my atom to take away that electron. And I said that this had a higher energy than this atom. So now we're working backwards. Now we have an atom, a beryllium atom, that has a positive charge that is higher in energy than this product, than this neutral beryllium. So in other words, when I take an electron and I put the electron inside 
my atom, energy is released. And this energy is known as the electron affinity. Okay, and I labeled the electron affinity values with the brown color. So for example, for beryllium, beryllium has approximately a zero for electron affinity. So it's very, very small. And that basically means that beryllium does not like to gain electrons, okay? And this uh, concept will become important in a second when we talk about ionic bonds. So let's see the conclusion. So atoms that have very low ionization energies, that basically means that electrons can be easily removed from those atoms. In other words, if we go to this table and we find atoms that have low ionization energies, for example, lithium, lithium has 5.39 electron volts of energy, uh, of ionization energy, while fluorine, for example, has almost or has three times the value, 17.42. That means that lithium is much more prone to losing an electron than is fluorine. Same thing goes for sodium, and same thing goes for chlorine. Chlorine has a higher value, higher ionization energy than sodium, and that means that sodium will, uh, will be more likely to lose that electron compared to chlorine. So, let's go back to this guy. High electron affinity means that atoms will easily accept electrons. So if we go back to this table, we see that the electron affinity is labeled with a brown color. And notice that for fluorine, <clears throat> for fluorine, electron affinity is 3.3, while the electron affinity for lithium is 0.62. So because the electron affinity is much higher for fluorine, for chlorine, that means that these guys will be much more likely to gain an electron than will lithium or sodium. So, let's see what ionic bonds are. So, ionic bonds. Now, atoms with very low ionization energies, that basically means that very small green values, so atoms on the left side of the periodic table, will form bonds with atoms that have high electron affinities. So, atoms that have very high brown numbers. So notice that fluorine, chlorine, oxygen, and sulfur all have much higher values, the brown values, compared to this side, where we have 0.62 for lithium, almost zero for both magnesium, beryllium, and 0.55 for sodium. In other words, ionic bonds will only form between atoms found on the left side and atoms found on the right side of our periodic table. Now notice I didn't label anything for our noble gases and that's because noble gases as we know have perfect electron configuration of electrons. And that means that they won't like to gain electrons but they won't like to lose electrons either. So let's take an example. Let's see how an ionic bond is in fact formed and how are the atoms actually held. What forces hold these two atoms together in an ionic bond? So let's look at a neutral lithium atom and let's look at a neutral fluorine atom. So we're taking one atom found on the left side and one atom found on the right side. So we're taking lithium which has one, two, three protons. So three protons are in the nucleus and that means if this is a neutral atom it must have the same number of electrons. So three electrons, two goes into the 1s orbital and one goes into the 2s orbital. So now we're taking fluorine. Fluorine has nine protons so it must have nine electrons for it to be a neutral atom. So that means two go into the 1s orbital, two go into the 2s orbital and five go into our 2p orbital, okay? So, what happens? Well, we said an ionic bond is formed between atoms that have low ionization energies 
and high electron affinity energy. So low ionization energies, that means that very little energy is required to take this electron away from the outermost shell. While this fluorine atom has a high electron affinity, which means that it is very likely that it will gain an electron. So what happens is one of these electrons found on the outermost shell is removed. And this electron is placed on the outermost shell in the 2p orbital of the fluorine atom. And now what happens is, since this still has three protons, but it now has two electrons, this develops a positive charge. While this fluorine atom, which had nine protons, nine electrons, now has nine protons, ten electrons. So it develops a negative charge. And let's recall what Coulomb's law tells us. So from physics, we know that Coulomb's law simply states that the constant K times charge 1 times charge 2 divided by the distance between the center of charges squared gives us the force due to a charge on another charge. So here we have one charge species, a cation, and here we have a second charge species, a anion. And because these guys have now developed charges, different charges, these charges, positive and negative, will attract each other according to Coulomb's law. So we basically find the distance between their center of charges. We plug that in here. We plug in the charges for both species. We multiply by the constant and we get the force. Uh, that each atom feels due to the other atom. So, because there is charge now, there is a force between them, and this force holds them together, and this is known as an ionic bond. So, once again, to recap, an ionic bond is a bond between a cation and an anion. And what that basically means, that neutral charges or neutral atoms will not be able to form ionic bonds. In order to form an ionic bond, you have to have a positive atom and a negative atom. And the only way ionic bonds form is if you mix atoms from this side, from the left side of the periodic table, with atoms on the right side of the periodic table. So one last important thing that I'd like to mention. So let's look at the electron configuration of these two atoms. Notice what happened. Remember, we said that these guys, the noble gases, have perfect electron configurations. All their shells are filled. So let's look at what happened to the electron configuration of lithium and fluorine. Well, when lithium lost an, ad, uh, lost an electron, right, when it lost an electron, it gained the electron configuration of helium noble gas while fluorine gained an electron and it formed the electron configuration of neon. Now these guys still have the same amount of protons, so that means they are still the same atom, but now they have very stable or perfect electron configurations. The, uh, their electron configuration matches that of the noble gases.